I'm going to start our recording. Hi, Lisa. Welcome. Hi. And Hi, I'm Lisa. Just... Hi. Go... We haven't met, but now we did. <laughs> I'm just can you hear me into Facebook. Mm -hmm. We we can hear okay. you well. Thank you. Okay. I I did my video on, but I haven't. Uh... I'm still kind of in my workout clothes from this morning Good. and I haven't even worked out yet. <laughs> oh, but you're halfway there. You got your clothes on. That means you I got will the clothes work on. Out. Yeah. That's the thing. Keep them That's on until the you battle. work out. Yeah, it That's is. That's half the battle. Exactly. So, so plan for the not... afternoon instead now, instead of the morning. Oh, That's fine. you know as what? As long as I... you do it. I think as long as you do it and as long as you put the clothes on, I feel like it's just a reminder when you uh, get yeah. sidetracked with other things. You're like, no, 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 I dressed for this. I need to actually yeah. do it now. So I pretend like I'm still in my good life days where I get up oh, and get, get to the gym. But <laughs> it's so I hard know, not right? to have that routine. I'm so bad at keeping up my own routine. Oh, oh yeah. I, I, I walk. And I do a whole lot of stuff, but exercising with weights and uh, resistance exercise, I'm terrible at keeping it up consistently. I do it, but I do right. 15 minutes now, 15 minutes later. But that's okay. They, I know. I've been reading. I know. We've been talking a lot about uh, like exercise snacking. Yeah. And like if you, you don't necessarily have to do it all in like in one hour a day, like you can do it in little bits throughout the day and it's just as effective. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing walking and things like that, I think that's fine. Like at least you're moving, right? So I'm, I'm feeling strong. So I have a friend yeah. my age and she challenged me to do 20 push ups a day, which mm -hmm. I do 10 and 10 on my toes and hands and that's then awesome. side planks and then 20 squats and then a few other things for core. So I'm keeping that up, but then wow. uh, and I'm, good. I started doing yoga in the evening because I have scoliosis. So my back is like this mm -hmm. and I used to swim, but that's out of the uh, picture now. So I'm, mm -hmm. doing, I'm doing yoga for back flexibility. That's awesome. Suzy, bon okay. We have a bunch of people joining. So we've just got Suzy joined. We've got Sharon. Hello. And We've Jay got Facey. Jay Facey, Jay Facey. hello. <laughs> <laughs> and we should also be live in Facebook now. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm just going to get everybody to please just mute their sound. Since we are live, thank you, everyone. We were getting a little bit of feedback there. And I just still have some people just coming in. Christina is just joining us. Hello there, Christina. Hi, so nice to see you today. Uh, nice to, nice. Well, I can't see you, but it's uh, nice to hear your voice anyways. And thank you for joining us, Christina. I'm you. glad you could make it on this one because I know uh, last yes, week's the last challenge. One. Yeah. Yes. So Christina, if I could just get you to um, mute your microphone, please. Okay for us thank you so much and um so we are going to get started because i know that everybody is on their lunch break like if you actually take a lunch break that is but or you're you're working and you're you know you're you're multitasking but i thank you so much both teresa and i thank you for taking the time to to join us today there we go teresa i couldn't see you for a second there Okay, I was I was looking at all the other names of who had joined us. So um, myself and Teresa, we are actually your co hosts today. So um, thank you everyone for joining. I'm sure there will still be more people coming in as well. Um, but I'm going to turn it over to Teresa first to introduce herself, then I'll introduce myself and then it's going to be over to Teresa to um, to do her first uh, her first part. Thank you, Jody. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Hope you are enjoying this spring as long as it lasts. It may not long, last as long as we hope, but today's still good. So let's be in the present. My name is Teresa Isabel Diaz. I'm a pharmacist. I have 25 years of experience of pharmacy and drug information in the GTA. 
I became a certified menopause practitioner uh, 2013, and I have all my information on the chat for you now. And the reason I did that was because uh, menopause is um, surrounded by secrecy and many women suffer through the change because of lack of information. So my three pillars of uh, taking care of women in midlife are to raise awareness, provide uh, education and support if you need. So I founded Menopause Ed. I do one-on-one -on -one consultations. I do workshops. I am open to talk to women's groups. I never say no to Jody because the more we talk about menopause, the easier it is for all women to go through it uh, and worry less and enjoy themselves more. I have all the information about my website, menopause.org. And if you go there, you can download the Please Yourself Tips for an Easier Menopause on the homepage. And I hope to share with you uh, my new website, which should be up and running in two weeks, and we'll have a lot more information. So thank you for being here today. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, so I'm Jody Pappas. I am the founder and the skincare chef of Clean Kiss. So I formulate uh, natural, clean skincare, primarily for women in their 40s plus. So, you know, you don't just have to be 40. You don't have to, you know, worry about what the actual number is. It's all about, um, you know, what is your mindset? And, you know, so whether you're 60, whether you're 35, um, I really believe that, you know, being all about pro-aging and focusing on all the positives. Are, I'm just accepting other people to come into the to the group here. There we go for just one second. So it's, you know, focusing on all the positives that go along with being a woman in her 40s or in midlife. And, you know, I'm, I'm really, really sensitive to the words anti aging. And uh, I really feel very strongly. It's my passion that as women, we need to be supporting pro aging, language pro-aging methodology pro-aging philosophy and do what makes us feel good and so forget about what society is telling us um, what beauty is defined as and i want you to be with me and with teresa and with the others that are you know the 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 people that are standing standing tall on this issue around pro-aging and so today's topic is specifically around you know, pro-aging skin and hair in perimenopause or in menopause. So Teresa is going to actually take us through that whole front end piece. Um, before I turn it over to Teresa, a couple of things. This is also being recorded live in my Facebook um, group called, uh, or my Facebook page rather, um, at Clean Kiss Lifestyle. So there may be people watching this on the replay. So if you are, welcome and thank you for, for tuning in. Um, the other thing is, is if you stay till the end, there will be prizes at the end, both Teresa and myself will be gifting prizes. So pay attention as we go through, because for my prize anyways, it's going to be based on um, the content that I'm sharing. And then I'm going to ask you some questions and whoever can answer the question actually wins my prize. So Teresa can explain um, in a moment how her prize will be awarded. Also at the end, we will answer any questions. So please go ahead and ask your questions in the chat and we will do our best to answer as many as we can in the time allotted. If we run out of time and we can't answer your question, we will answer it in Facebook. Both Teresa and I will go into Facebook and we'll, uh, we'll type the answers there, okay? I know Teresa mentioned she was gonna put her contact information in the chat. I haven't checked, but I'm sure it's probably there or will be there. And um, I will also do the same. So while Teresa's talking, I'll go in the chat and I'll put all of my contact for you. And at the end, I'm also going to give you a discount code that is just for people that were here today or watched it on Facebook. So that's another incentive to stay listening to the very end. So you can also get that discount code that I'm going to be offering after today. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Teresa and she's going to totally educate us on everything we need to know about perimenopause and menopause. Thanks, Teresa. Thank you, Jody, but not everything because we would have to be here until lunch tomorrow. So I'll stop. 
I'll start with an overview of the stages and we'll focus on skin and hair, which is today's topic. But I want to start with the stages because unfortunately there's still so much secrecy about menopause that even the terms we use to describe the different stages are being confused and women don't know what one means and what the other means. So let's start at the very beginning. When we are born as women, we have millions, billions of eggs in our ovaries. And some of those eggs will be released uh, during our reproductive years. Some of them will just die in the ovaries and might go anywhere. So in puberty, we start ovulating. We start getting our periods, we get older, and that's when we get our female characteristics too, thanks to the sexual hormones, estrogen and progesterone, estrogen being the predominant female hormone. We get breasts, we get hips, we get some of us a soft tummy that is covered in nice protective fat for future growth of babies and so on. And so during the reproductive years, most women have um, predictable regular periods. Every so, ma every so many days you uh, ovulate and then uh, if you don't get pregnant, you get a period. The thing with menopause is that the ovaries age faster than we do. So we are one of the uh, few species that we know so far only two orcas or killer whales and women, we live, uh, outlive our ovaries, meaning that all the other animals can reproduce, have babies until they die, but orcas and uh, females and orcas and humans can only reproduce for a certain amount of years. A hundred years ago, women were dying at the time of menopause. So menopause is not a new thing, but it is a new issue for us because now it happens in midlife or two thirds into our life when everything else around us is going strong as well. Raising kids, looking after older parents, having a career, a job, taking care of a million balls that are up in the air. So when the hormones start changing and you start noticing changes and challenges, sometimes it's hard, it's bothersome, it's difficult because there's so much else going on. And on top of this, of course, the ignorance that most women don't know what's going on. So reproductive age is when we have periods and usually a predictable uh, cycle. As the ovaries age, they start working less predictably and then uh, they start missing ovulation. So you may go a, a month or two without ovulation, without ovulate, ovulating, without having a period. You may have heavier bleeding. You may have periods closer together. You may have periods further apart. You may have spotting. So all of this is possible. And it's usually the first sign that you have come into perimenopause, which is this time leading up to menopause, where your ovaries are not working as they used to. And at a certain time, they will stop working, which is menopause. So menopause is not a big uh, uh, strange happening. It's not a disease. It's a natural thing that happens to all women. At some point, we will not be able to ovulate and be fertile anymore. That's menopause. It actually believe comes from Greek, menopause, a pause in menses. It has nothing to do with men because we don't need them for this at all. It has to do with you stop ovulating and menstruating. So perimenopause can last two to eight years. Menopause is confirmed when you haven't had a period for 12 consecutive months. It usually happens between the ages of 45 to 55. And after you confirm no periods for 12 months, you are in post-menopause for the rest of your life. The average age in North America is 51, 52. So we can live one third of our lives in post-menopause without the benefit effects of estrogen. So that's something to talk about in another uh, presentation. So one of the myths is that menopause is an old lady's disease. And when I reach out to organizations because I like to do lunch and learns about menopause in a workplace because a lot of women work outside the home and need support from their employers, they tell me, oh, I don't have any old ladies here 65. I don't have a, that ladies that old working here. Well, do some math. If the average age of menopause is 51, 
And perimenopause can last two to eight years, subtract eight from 51, and you have 43. I don't think that's old, and that's the age most women are in a workforce now. If you are 45 when you reach menopause and your um, perimenopause lasted eight years, that puts you in your late 30s. I don't know any women who are prepared to start perimenopause in their late 30s. And that's why I keep talking about this because I believe awareness that things can change as early as your late 30s will bring you a lot of more peace of mind, less worry, less anxiety, and will help you have an easier menopause transition. So to summarize, perimenopause are the years leading up to menopause. Menopause is the end of ovulation, the end of fertility, and the end of periods. And after it's confirmed uh, uh, 12 months with not, no periods, you are in post-menopause. So goodbye estrogen and all the benefit effects. Many other symptoms are common in perimenopause, which is usually the hardest stage of menopause to go through because of all the changes. Once in menopause, your levels of hormones are low, but at least they're stable. But in perimenopause, they go up and down. If you ovulate, don't ovulate, you make more estrogen, more progesterone, less. It's a mess. And it's very common to feel uh, that you're having periods that are heavier, that you have painful breasts and sore breasts. You may start uh, having urine leakage, uh, difficulty sleeping, aches and pains, headaches, um, memory difficulty, forgetting your kids' names, confusing your kids' names, uh, difficulty concentrating. Uh, all of this is common in perimenopause. 20% of women breeze right through the change. They don't have anything to uh, ch that challenges them. 20% get severe symptoms that make them even quit their jobs. So the rest of us fall in the middle. So 60% of us have some mild to moderate symptoms, which I don't like to call symptoms because it's not a disease, but it's the best word I can find to describe this. Um, and if you need help, I offer support and there's no reason to suffer alone because that's another uh, myth. Women think they are the only one going through this, but there's all of us, millions going through this right now all over the world. So if you are having challenges, difficulties, symptoms, reach out. I do discovery calls. I'll be very happy to see how I can help you. And if I can't, I'll send it to someone else who will be a better expert for your problem. And remember that menopause does not affect you only. It affects all of those who live around you, your spouse, partner, children, family, friends, and coworkers. So it's not a woman's problem. It affects 50% of us directly and the rest of us indirectly. Today we're talking about skin and hair. So the uh, most important predictor of uh, how old you look, it's not your age, but it is your time since menopause. So as I said, estrogen is our best friend. And as soon as it goes, a lot of changes take place and many of them happen on the skin. So if you have a later menopause, you may have an, oh, a younger, healthier, brighter, shinier look in your later years than uh, someone who had a menopause at 45 or something like that. So if you are reaching menopause, think about all the things that you can do to keep your skin feeling and looking healthy. Collagen is one of the first things that starts going down because um, collagen is like the body, the body's scaffolding. It's the glue that holds the body together and it fills up the skin um, and it breaks down faster than we can replace it as we age. And some 30% of the uh, collagen is lost during the five years after menopause. And in postmenopause, it falls by about 2% over the next 20 years. And these statistics are similar to loss of bone, which is another talk about preventing osteoporosis. And midlife is a perfect time to remember about that and prevent osteoporosis in uh, older age. So because collagen goes, skin loses its firmness. It gets more lax. It gets more wrinkly. Um, and this, as I said, it's due to uh, the decrease in estrogen as well as aging. I think Jody put a post on a video on 
something about face exercises. Did you ever make a, a face book? So that is very important because underlying muscle mass acts as a filler to reduce stacking. So if you can um, do exercises special for your face, it may help the facial muscles uh, be more uh, firm and increase bulk and therefore decrease laxity and, um, and wrinkles. Another one that is a big enemy for skin is sun. So um, photo aging is what happens to your skin's physiology when it gets exposed to sun. And sun is very much responsible for a lot of wrinkles, roughness and dryness, irregular pigmentation, sallowness, which is grayish, greenish, yellow color, and brown spots. So if sun is your skin's worst enemy, uh, your best friend is using a good sunscreen. So um, if you can use a sunscreen, use at least SPF 30 to make sure that you, uh, you get a good protection. Also, hydration is very important from the inside out and from the outside in. Uh, most women do not drink amounts of water that are considered healthy and that what is also healthy for your brain. So if you have brain fog in perimenopause, make sure that you drink, good share and get a good example, make sure that you drink uh, lots of water, eight glasses a day for brain health and will help your skin as well. From the outside, we don't wanna get rid of all the nice protectant oils that our skin has. So if you remember, you do your dishes with hot soapy water, avoid that in your shower. Use warm water, not hot. My preferred skin wash is glycerin soap because it doesn't wash away the natural um, fats of the skin, the natural oils. And the best thing to do after you shower to trap the water in is to just dab yourself, don't dry yourself dry completely, but that, tap yourself to dry and then apply your lotions or your creams right after your shower. I'm saying things right because Jody is nodding. Remember that hydration uh, also is a problem if you lose too much water. So caffeinated drinks like coffee, tea, energy drinks, soda, pop, they will act as a diuretic and you lose water through that. So make sure you go low on caffeine and high on water. And I apologize for being the party pooper here. Alcohol is also a dehydrator. And we all know that our mouths are very parched the morning after heavy drinking night. That's because alcohol is a, is a diuretic. And if you wanna keep your, in, your water inside fine, do not drink as much alcohol. When you can fly again, remember that flying is one of the most dehydrating things you can do. So take water with you. Once you get through the gate, if anyone remembers how to fly, get through the gate, go to the water thing, fill up your bottle and drink that instead of drinking alcohol in your flight. Itchy skin is very common. It's called formication. It's the word comes from uh, formiga, which is a, a Latin word for ants. So some women feel like things are crawling on their skin and they just feel this itch. Um, if you suffer from that, uh, there are several things you can do. If you wanna give me a discovery call, we'll talk through it. Some uh, emollients or oils are good for that. Oral antihistamines can also help, but not everyone can take them and they have side effects. Hormone therapy will work and so on, but of course it's very individualized uh, care. Some women in midlife get uh, skin sensitivities. So they start developing ration hives. If that happens to you, keep a diary of everything you eat, drink and think because stress could be a factor as well. So if you, are, if you are experiencing new rashes and skin um, uh, sensitivities, write down on a diary and see if you can put together what's causing uh, the itch and the hives. From skin, we go to hair and hair tends to fall off where we need it and grow where we don't want it. So women tend to get uh, uh, some bald patches different from men. Men usually tend to uh, get a receding airline. Um, women can do that, but they can also get some patches along the uh, hair 
playing and so on. So it's common. And remember, we lose a hundred hairs per day, I believe. So uh, if you see something like this, what can you do? Well, the best thing for every ailment is to have a very healthy diet. And that should include less red meat for a he hair health, um, low calories, low on red meat, high content of zinc, iron, and vitamin D. Now you cannot go start taking iron over the counter because too much iron is actually poisonous. So go with a multivitamin if you want, call me if you need to find out how much iron you need. And the best thing is keep your appointments with your doctor because you want to make sure that you do not have a thyroid disease or low iron when you find your hair um, falling. So hair growth, uh, there's about five to 15% of women who start getting hairs in strange places where we don't need it. I say the best investment is a good pair of tweezers, a magnifying glass and good lighting. Um, there are medications for it, but everything else will be more invasive. But of course you can always do uh, waxing or electrolysis or laser, but all those things have side effects and they are more costly. And at this time of the uh, COVID season, we probably cannot go anywhere. So you can get your tweezers and start looking for those rogue hairs, which are the ones that are start uh, growing in funny places, usually around here, because we are getting more like men, believe it or not. Less estrogen makes us more like men, more androgen-like. But we also get a, um, peachy hair, so small, fine hairs growing all over. Um, if that is a problem for you, you can do waxing and a whole bunch of other things or bleaching, whatever. So that's it for me. I will give a prize at the end as well. Um, we'll talk about that after Jody's uh, demonstration. Thank you so much. Thank you, Teresa. I have to say that I remember an older friend of mine telling me when I was in my 20s, about these rogue chin hairs. And I remember it being the funniest thing I had ever heard. And now every time I find a rogue chin hair, which I do have two that come right out of this spot. And sometimes they get so long and I don't know they're there until I feel it in the wind. And I'm like, oh dear God, I've actually, <laughs> I've become that woman. So I have to tell you, I mean, it's common, it's normal. It's, I mean, this is all part of the process, right? So you just have to laugh because we're all gonna get these funny things happening to our, to our bodies as we age, right? So, um, so thank you, Teresa. Teresa, I'll ask you if you don't mind to just manage the chat for us right now. I've just posted in the chat um, my YouTube video that Teresa was talking about with the face yoga exercise. So it's a five minute video, I've just posted it. And um, I've also posted my Calendly um, appointment booker. If somebody, by the time, you know, you've listened to me talk, if you want to book a 20 minute virtual consult with me, you can just click on that Calendly link and you can, you can book in with me. So that's a lot of fun. And I love meeting people that way. So as I promised you, I'm going to do a live virtual demonstration because one of the things I get asked all the time is how to apply all these different products. So whether you're using Clean Kiss products or you're using other products, um, it's, it's all the same um, philosophy in terms of the order that you use things. So you may have your own products that work perfectly well for you and you're happy to keep using them. Um, or like you might actually concoct some of your own things. I talk to a lot of women that make their own rosehip serum, for example. Um, so if that's something that you do, then that's great. So you can certainly keep doing that. What I'm gonna share with you are just suggestions. I make a lot of face care products. I've also just launched a hair care line. So today is all about skin and hair. I am also going to talk about body care. Um, Teresa and I, the reason I love doing events with Teresa is because we are so aligned. So, so much of what she just shared with you, I have to just reiterate, um, you know, one of my big, big things, anybody that knows me knows I drink water nonstop. So, you know, I held this up earlier when Teresa was talking about alcohol. It wasn't because I was boozing last night. It was because I'm always with my water glass. So, 
I have water all the time, but I will tell you that when I do enjoy a glass of wine, I also make sure that for every sip of wine, I'm taking an equal amount of water into my body. The same is true with coffee. So I'm a big coffee lover. Coffee is a bit of a religion to me. And so I, you know, I do enjoy my coffee, but I make sure that I'm choosing a good quality organic coffee, number one. And number two, every sip basically of coffee, I'm also complementing it with water because any caffeine, as Teresa said, does negate um, the water you know, volume in your body. So because we are made up mostly of water, we wanna make sure that we're always staying really well hydrated. So speaking of hydration, you're all on this call because you're probably in perimenopause or you know you you are somewhere along the menopause spectrum, which is actually something I read this morning and it gave me a good little chuckle. Um, you know that we are all you know in our in our 40s and 50s we're all on the spectrum of menopause. So I like that as an expression. So that's why you're here today. And you're probably here today because you're experiencing a challenge with your skin or with your hair, and you want to hopefully get some solutions on how to tackle that challenge. So, you know, I'm talking about um, water intake internally, but it's just as important to have um, topical water and uh, oils applied topically. So my two biggest things that I feel are so critical for us are to get water and oil inside our body and on our skin. So the one thing that I always talk about is that there is no magic pill and there's no magic, as Teresa can attest, and she, uh, she's a trained pharmacist, but there's also no magic potion in a bottle. That's right, ladies. You can't buy you know, all the clean kits in the world um, is not going to solve if there's something in your lifestyle that is not conducive to pro aging. So, you know, like the water, the alcohol, the caffeine, and, you know, managing your stress, those are all lifestyle factors that also need to be managed along with a really good skin and hair care routine. So we can't, you know, just buy, buy a magic solution and think that that's going to actually solve all the challenges that you're facing. Okay. So I hate to tell you that it is a whole package. And so speaking of which, I don't want to forget to tell you this. If you haven't already, um, you can go to my website. So it's cleankisslifestyle.com. I think I've already put that in the chat. On my website, I've got a uh, my my new e-guide has been posted. It's called Pro Tips for Pro-Aging for Women 40 and Plus. So in this e-guide are all of these tips that I'm going to talk about today and way more. So it's going to talk about things like nutrition and other lifestyle factors that you need to really be taking into consideration if you want to have beautiful skin and hair. So it's the whole package. It's not just what comes in the bottle. Sorry to tell you. Okay, but speaking of what's in the bottle, I've actually put this whole display together, which you can't really see because of the way my camera angle is. So this is real life. I'm actually just gonna shift my camera for a second. Now it's like a little cooking show. Um, I just wanna show you what I've got here. Um, so hopefully you can see this okay. I'm kind of blocking the lighting, so let me just adjust here. Um, so I'm gonna show you what's here and then I'm gonna move the camera back up to my face so that I can actually show you how I'm gonna use these products, okay? So first and foremost, um, what I wanna show you is um, the products that are in what I call the premium skincare line. So that's really what you're seeing here. I'm actually super proud of this because this is all in my new glass packaging, which I'm really excited about. It's been a long project in the making. And so I finally have all of this new glass packaging to, to share with the world. Um, so first and foremost, I've got, um, because I'm a huge fan of oil, um, everything I make is um, made with plant-based um, oils. So first and foremost is this cleansing oil. 
this cleansing oil um, has grapeseed oil. You can tell by the color. It's got jojoba oil. Um, it's got chia seed oil. And then it's got a bunch of essential oils. And all of the oils that are in here do a beautiful job of cleansing your skin and removing all the dirt, all the makeup, um, you know, all the bacteria, everything that you want to get off of your skin. But it doesn't strip your skin. So it's not going to leave you feeling dry and feeling like you're lacking moisture on your face. Um, the next thing I want to show you is Rose Chamomile Facial Toner. So this facial toner, like I said, it's Rose and Chamomile Water, which are two of my favorite things um, for a number of reasons. It is a great refresher just to use any time of the day. So I have a lot of women that tell me they just keep it on their desk. Um, back when I was doing airplane travel that Teresa was talking about, because it is so dehydrating, I would keep this in my purse or my carry-on bag, and especially for long-haul flights, which, yes, we all hope to take those again one day, um, I would use this to spritz on my face mid-flight, and um, it's just a great toner to use. So definitely using it morning and night, but then also using it throughout the day and I'll show you how to use it in just a moment. It's actually quite simple, quite refreshing. And then next I wanna show you um, Kiss Me You Fool. This is a rosehip seed oil serum. And so if you're not familiar with Clean Kiss, all of my names, it sounds like I've got an obsession with kissing. I am a, I am a romantic at heart, that's for sure. But yes, all of my names have kiss in them. So this is a serum that you would use um, morning and night again, and you would use it after you've applied your toner. And again, I'm going to demo this in a moment. The reason you would use something like this in your ritual is because um, as we age, we can get things like hyperpigmentation, which are dark spots or known as age spots, which I, you know, I don't really love that name, but it happens. And it happens sometimes because of hormones. It happens because of free radical damage. Um, so and just losing collagen, as Teresa mentioned, collagen and elastin, um, we don't produce as much as we age. So this is a great way to repair and prevent um, further damage from happening to your skin. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to um, our, our creams. So this is the packaging of our new day cream called Kiss Me Every Day. Oh, we can only hope, right? So that is a day cream. It's got red raspberry seed oil. Res rad, red raspberry seed oil is a natural SPF. So I, I don't promote this as a sunscreen replacement, but it definitely gives you a little bit of added protection in addition to sunscreen, okay? So I use this every day, every morning, and I'll, again, I'll show you the order in which to use it. It's a it's a kind of a light whipped texture, I would say. It's nice to apply under makeup. We also have a day, uh, sorry, a night cream called Kiss Me Good Night, and this night cream is heavier. It's got avocado seed butter in it, and um, so it just provides a heavier barrier as you are sleeping. It restores your skin with all the beautiful oils and butters that are in this. Um, I do actually have some people that choose to use this day and night. It's not my personal preference because I tend to have some oily skin. So I like to use the lighter one in the day and then the heavier one at night. Next, I'm going to go to a brand new product, which I am super excited about called Kiss Me Awake. It's officially launching Monday, although I made it live on my website right now um, for this call because I wanted you to be able to check it out if you were curious. This has orchid stem cells in it as one of its active ingredients. It's also got some other botanicals um, that provide a firming action. So this is great for firming and tightening around the eye area. It's great for nourishing the eye area. It's also got squalane oil, which is a beautiful plant-based oil, which provides really nice moisture to the eye area. I also put a little bit of this on my lips. So I'll show you that in just a moment. And then I've got two scrubs. So I've got Sweet Sugar Kisses Lemon Sugar Scrub. And then this is new. It's not yet available, but I wanted to do a little teaser. This will be out in June. 
And this one is a sea algae and apricot seed scrub. So that'll be out in June. This one is um, available. This one is tried and true. And this one is very, very popular, this sugar and lemon um, uh, face scrub. So then I've actually got a couple of tools here. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about these tools. This one is called a gua sha. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate it, but I'm going to explain how and why you would use this in just a moment. And then this other one is a rose quartz facial roller. So again, I will explain how and why you would use this one as well. Before I pan back up to my face, I'm going to go this way and I'm just going to show you that I also have, for those of you that suffer with acne, it happens. Acne in your, you know, in your midlife definitely happens. And there's probably a whole other episode we can do about acne and why it happens. Right, Teresa? We could probably do that as our next talk um, because it's mostly to do with hormones. Sometimes it's to do with nutrition, but, um, you know, I would also say it's probably a combination of, you know, having an imbalance in your gut as well as, you know, some hormonal imbalances. Um, but I do also have an acne line. So um, there's a cleanser, there's a toner in the acne line, there's a moisturizer, and there's also a spot treatment. So I've got a lot of teenagers that buy this. Um, their moms are buying it for their teens, or I have women buying it for themselves, and maybe they share. Maybe they buy a set and they share it between the teen and the mom. And um, so I'm going to just flip the camera back up here. Hope that doesn't make anybody uh, nauseous with the back and forth. Now I want to switch over to my demo. So first of all, in the morning, the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I actually, yes, the product is actually called, um, if you go on my site and you look under um, face, if you shop my products and go under face, you'll be able to see all of these um, products. Okay. So if that's what the question was asking. Okay, so first thing in the morning, the first thing I do when I go into the washroom, aside from using the toilet, is I then splash my face with cold water. So a lot of people are surprised to learn that I don't actually wash my face in the morning unless I work out and then I wanna wash the sweat and the bacteria off of my face. But when I just first wake up in the morning, the best thing that you can do for your skin is to turn on that cold tap and to do about five or six splashes of cold water on your face. And I also make sure to really get in and cleanse my eye area. So I've also studied Ayurvedic medicine and Ayurvedic skincare. For those of you that may or may not know what that is, it's um, Ayurvedic medicine is you know about 5,000 years old. It comes from India. It's the sister science to yoga. So I'm also a yoga teacher which is why I love Ayurveda. And Ayurveda says that one of the most important things that we need to do, thanks, thanks Teresa for posting that, is to cleanse our eyes. So our eye passage and our nasal passage are um, really important to be cleaning. So that's the other purpose of using cold water on my face is I'm able to um, you know, just kind of wash away whatever accumulated during the night and I'm cleansing the eye area, okay? So that's the first thing in the morning. The next thing I do after I've done that is I apply this rose chamomile facial toner. So I do have a little bit of makeup on right now, but I'm just gonna show you. It's as simple as that. So I just spritz it on and I do not wipe it off. Um, you don't need to use a cotton pad or anything like that. The reason being is it's very calming and it's very, it's very moisturizing. So I like to put it on and just leave it on. So again, we want as much water and as much oil um, to be retained in our skin. So notice that my skin is still wet, it's still moist. This is when you're going to be applying your serum. So it's the same as what Teresa was talking about earlier, that when we get out of the shower and our skin is lightly um, damp, that's when you wanna be applying your moisture. So now I'm taking the Rosehip Serum, I'm just putting a couple drops in my hand. I rub it together in my hand and then I kind of gently pat it onto my skin. I do my neck, I do my decolletage. 
Um, so whatever you're doing to your face, you always want to do to your neck and you want to continue down basically to your breasts. Um, that's a lot of, uh, that's a mistake that a lot of women make that they don't continue their skincare all the way down. And then their skin looks beautiful and glowing and tight, but then the rest of them, their, their chest area looks a little bit crepey. So you always want to be sure that you're doing that, especially when you're adding that sunscreen as well. Okay. So that's that next step. Now, when you're layering your skincare, you always want to go lightest to heaviest. Okay. Lightest to heaviest. So notice I started with the water. Then I added the rose chamomile facial tonic, which again is light. Now I'm going a little bit heavier. I added my serum. I'm, I'm letting that rose hip serum kind of work its magic. Then the next thing I would do is add the day cream. So kiss me every day would be the next step in my process. Um, actually, I'm sorry. I take that back. Hold on. The next step in my process would be my eye cream. So you just take a little bit of the eye cream. I'm going to do it with my right finger so that I can show you how I apply it. So just a little bit is all you need. And so first I just put it there and then I use my ring finger to dab it into place. And you want to go all the way around the eye, all the way up to the brow bone, all the way into the corners and all the way around. Okay. I've actually already put all this stuff on today. So this is a second layer that I'm getting on my skin. So my skin's going to be super happy today. So that would be next. Okay. So whatever eye cream you're using, that would go on next. And then you're going a little bit heavier with your day cream. So just going to take a little bit of day cream. And of course you're rubbing it in because I'm dressed. I'm not going to be able to go all the way down um, my chest area, but again, the same rule applies. You want to get right into your hairline. You want to go all the way down your neck and all the way down. You also want to make sure that whatever you're doing to your cheeks and your forehead, that you're doing to your lips. Okay. So I've got a little bit of lipstick on, so I'm not going to do it, but I make sure that my, all my oils and my creams that I'm actually rubbing them right into our, right into my lips. A lot of us women in our forties, in our midlife, we start seeing some of those lines. Um, it could be from using a straw. Oh, well, I like using straws. So I'm going to keep using it. It could be from maybe smoking. Um, so there's a lot of reasons. Um, it could be if you're always puckering up, you're going to get those lines. Okay. Now I want to show you, um, so that's, that's my daytime routine. Here's what would be different at night. So my nighttime routine, now I am cleansing. So I would use this um, Kiss Me Clean cleansing oil that I mentioned earlier. There's a couple ways you can use it. I personally just put it in my hands and then I rub it on my face and then I use a washcloth and then I just wash it off with warm water. You're gonna see that you get all of your makeup off. This is just one cleanser and it's gonna take off your eye makeup and everything on your face. The other way you can use it is actually just by pumping it right into, or right onto rather, hopefully you can see that, onto a cleansing pad. And then I'm going to use this and I'm going to use it on my face, on my cheek. I'm gonna show you here in a second how it's starting to take off my makeup. So it comes off really easily and it works so great. And it actually feels like I've applied my oil directly to my face. So I do now rinse with warm water to take off my makeup. Um, that would be recommended. You wouldn't wanna just leave it sitting there just in case there is still some bacteria on your face. After I cleanse at night, I do the same thing that I mentioned earlier. So now I'm using my toner again. Then I'm following up with my serum. Then I'm following up with my eye cream yet again. So a lot of these products you're using twice a day. And then you finish with your night cream, okay? And again, this is a heavier barrier that you're putting on at night. So it's going to provide a lot of um, rest and you know um, restoration to your skin while you're sleeping. It's gonna be repairing um, any skin damage that you may have done throughout the day. So that is how you would do your morning and your nighttime routine. Now I want to show you um, these tools. So this is called a gua sha. 
I am not trained in traditional Chinese medicine, and that's where this tool comes from. So in the spirit of, um, you know, really giving credit to the Chinese community, the Chinese um, uh, medical doctors who actually um, use this in their treatments, I don't feel I'm doing a good service to actually show you how to use it. But what I will tell you is that this product will be available. Actually, this is also now live on my website um, because it's being sold in my spring skincare box that is now available um, on my website. So it was officially going to launch on Monday, but because I was doing this talk today, I wanted to make it available now in case anybody wants to take a peek. So you get a gua sha in this skincare box. You also get the facial cleansing oil and that brand new eye cream that I was talking about and my brand new body lotion called Lemon Kisses. Um, it's got Litsy oil. So Kelly Lett is on this call. So she gets full credit for um, you know, the idea to use Litsy oil in, in products. So if you're interested in that gua sha, like I said, it'll be available in that box. And then part of that on my website is I do actually um, give you links to some trained, qualified, traditional Chinese medical doctors that can actually instruct you properly how to use this tool. Because it's amazing for lymphatic drainage, for facial massage. If you suffer from puffy eyes, it's great to use around the eye area. And it's wonderful to use in conjunction with something like a face serum so that you're not pulling and tugging on your delicate face tissue, okay? I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna go rather quickly. The other tool that I promised to talk about is um, this facial roller. I like using this one at night, whereas the gua sha I like using in the morning. So you may not wanna purchase two tools, um, but they, they do kind of um, similar but different things. So this I use around the eye area to depuff and to massage. This would be more for like a lymphatic drainage uh, massage and for sculpting and toning your face. So different tools, both available on my website. Okay, I talked about acne. I talked about all the premium face stuff. The last thing I really wanna quickly mention is about hair products. So I'm just gonna angle my camera down once again. Um, so hopefully you can see this here. Let me back it up. I just launched these three new curly hair products. The same principle applies here that you really want for, for aging hair or for any hair for that matter. The two things that you need are oil and water. That's especially true for curls. Um, curls cannot survive and look healthy without oil and water. So I now have these three new curly hair products that are all based in that premise of getting oil and water into your hair. So I don't have time to go into that, but I have posted on Instagram a bunch of videos recently about how to use those curly hair products. So I just wanna reiterate um, that, you know, the most important things that our hair and our skin needs in perimenopause or menopause are water, waters and oils. So anytime you can be applying water and oil to your skin and internally, that's what you want to go for. In addition to water and oil, I want you to think about, so you're always going to be hydrating your body. You're going to be drinking lots of water. I want you to think about getting healthy fats into your body. So things like avocado, I make sure I eat one full avocado every single day. Hemp, um, hemp seeds, um, I add those to my salads, I add those to my smoothies, my yogurt, things like that. They're, they're a great protein, plus they are um, great for healthy fats, okay? All things that our body and our skin and our hair need. Um, Teresa mentioned about how collagen is starting to deplete when we're in this time of our life. So I personally do um, like to supplement with collagen. So I use a really high quality marine based collagen that I add um, every day to either a smoothie or to my coffee. And when you are taking a collagen product, I mean, the reason you're doing it, sometimes it helps with, with our joints, with our muscles. It's also great for skin, hair and nails. 
Um, you also want to be making sure that you are adding vitamin C rich foods to your diet. So things like think citrus fruits, think broccoli, leafy greens, you know, spinach. So things like that, wherever you can get vitamin C into your body, along with those healthy fats and hydration, your skin is really, really going to thank you for it. So keep all of those things in mind. Again, all of this that I've talked about is included in that pro-aging guide that is on my website. So if you go there to my website, cleankisslifestyle.com, you will get a pop-up that will ask you to um, input your email and then we'll email you that guide. Okay, so I think that was about it for me. I am going to turn it back over to Teresa. We can do our draws. We're gonna answer any questions that are in the chat. I'm gonna offer my discount code in the chat. And um, Teresa, I'm gonna get you to come off of mute if you can, please. So Ratna asks you, do you use the gua sha before the cream? So you always wanna be using gua sha on skin that has either cream or oil. Um, cream is just as good, although I personally use it with oil. But sometimes, for example, I'll put on my oil, then I'll put my day cream, and then I, I go, oh, I forgot my gua sha. I forgot to do my, my gua sha ritual. So then I will do it after I've put the cream on. The point being, you just don't ever want to do it on a dry skin, okay? You never want to be doing any sort of you know, whether it be a roller or a gua sha on dry skin, because you run the risk of, you know, making damage or, you know, creating wrinkles. Okay. Were there any other questions in the chat? No, that, uh, that was it that I could see. Okay. So uh, my, I'm not going to give a prize, um, but I'm going to give a special offer and I'm going to write it on the, uh, on the chat, so I offer programs, four weeks is start your journey and three months is um, the menopause journey uh, program. And if you book it by the end of this month, if you book it by March 31st, you'll get $50 off and you can use book consultations and work with me up till the end of June. So that's my offer to all the lovely ladies who were here today and listen to my explanation. Amazing, amazing offer. Thanks, Teresa. Um, okay, so for mine, I have a question and this is always tricky. So I'm gonna give everybody um, a warning to come into the chat, make sure that you're in the chat and ready to start typing. Ugh. Somebody is uh, uh -oh. unmuted. Uh -oh. So if I could just get everybody to remute themselves. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so in the chat, everybody's fingers are ready to answer the question. It's a simple one. I know you all know this. If you were listening to me, you heard me say that most importantly, our skin and our hair and our body needs two things. What are the two things? Oh, actually Susie was the first one to answer. So Susie put in there oil and water. So she was the quickest uh, finger typer there. So thank you to Susie. Susie, I'm gonna need to get uh, your contact information. So, um, if you could send me that, that would be great. Or just post it, uh, or actually send it to me at Jody at cleankisslifestyle.com. You could just send me that email now with your contact and then I can communicate with you that way and tell you your prize is actually a $50 gift card, um, an, an electronic gift card that you can use for anything in my Clean Kiss uh, shop. So anything on cleankisslifestyle.com, you can shop Susie and it's yours, okay? Now, I also have a discount code that I'm gonna post in the chat right now. So if you wish to get 15% um, off of Clean Kiss products, uh, you can use this code, it's ProAgingSkin15. And I just posted that in the chat. So that's the code you can use at checkout on my website and you will be able to use that 15% after you've spent $50 or more. 
You will also get free shipping anywhere in Canada and the United States um, after you've got $50 or more in your cart. So the free shipping will apply and happy shopping to all of you. If you have any questions, um, you can book that skin consult with me on Calendly. I've put the link here as well. So you can reach out that way or you can just reach out through any of my social media handles and just send me a DM. And I'm always happy to um, answer any questions that anyone has. So Teresa, have we missed anything? Oh, I forgot to mention that one of the worst things for skin is smoking. Uh, and then you brought it up. So if any of you <laughs> is still smoking, um, it would be nice to stop smoking for many reasons, including your skin health. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's um, that's that's a tough one. I hope I hope if there are any smokers on the call that you'll take that advice to heart. And again, sure. if you have any questions for me about your menopause journey, uh, email me at Teresa at menopauseed.org or book a discovery call on my website, menopauseed.org. It was Amazing. a pleasure being here. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for all of you that took time today to join Teresa and I. This was this was really great. Thank you all. I hope to talk with Hi, you all thank again. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs>